Welcome to the Deal Final Corner. So this is your weekly property talk show brought to you by Property Filter, hosted by myself, Guillaume Black, your favorite Frenchman, the CEO and co-founder at Property Filter. So it's the UK's highest rated platform to find deals. And we are on a mission to empower our property investor and deal sourcer members to find a thousand deals in, within the next 12 months following the Property Filter blueprint. The purpose really, if you are new uh, to this, so the Deal Final Corners is to give you more and the best of the available resources by inviting expert guests that will share with you the latest and most current strategies, tactics, and secrets about what actually works right now in terms of finding and making deals and the reality of systemizing and running a high-performance business in property. So it really is my pleasure today to introduce to you my good friend, uh, Sam Carter, on today's Deal Finder Corner. So... Sam is an award-winning property developer, so you might have seen him on uh, Homes Under the Armour or on social media, collecting top performer awards, you know, at Simon Zucci's Mastermind Program or Volta Ponte's Ultimate Property Investors uh, Program, as well as uh, a finalist at the National Property Investor Awards or earning a position in the top five best HMOs in the country last year. Uh, so not only does he find his deals using Property Filter, he built a seven-figure property uh, portfolio generating seven-figure income, and he shares his knowledge on property development, offering a comprehensive guide to individuals uh, on how to efficiently develop properties on time and on budget. So, <clears throat> so today, he will reveal all his secrets on and the time-tested methods that have propelled SJC uh, property development into an award-winning business. And he will walk you through the step-by-steps he uses to help you do the same. So what you can expect from today's episode, so how Sam and his team uh, find deals using Props Filter, how to conduct bulletproof due, bulletproof due diligence uh, so you get the best deals. He will also share some free resources. Uh, thank you very much, Sam, for that, uh, so that you are on top of your game when it comes to developing properties and so that you can convert multiple deals at the same time. And he will share the, the main, main thing I'm here for is the resources and also he'll share his uh, end-to-end methodology whether you are a beginner or an expert, this will ensure you develop on time, on budget, no matter the time of the project. And we leave it uh, some time at the end, so we got some exclusive uh, Q&A time as well. So uh, I'm very much looking for forward. I'm very much looking forward to today's uh, deal final corner and uh, Sam's uh, talk uh, today. So please give a massive property filter welcome to Mr. Sam Carter. Woo! Over to you, mate. Brilliant. Thank you so much for the introduction, Guillaume. Thank you so much for the amazing introduction. As Aguiam said, my name is Sam Carter from SJC Property Developments, and this is my amazing team. So we have my other co-director, uh, Stephen Carter, my father, my brother, Matthew Carter, and Ryan. So as you can see, it's a real nice family little business here that we've got going on. So I want to talk to you a little bit about history and our path to success. So it all started back in 1980 when my father um, went on his apprenticeship journey and become a specialised joiner. Uh, he went on to get his City and Guilds qualification and uh, at the start of his career he worked on a number of properties throughout the whole of the UK. Some of the more prestigious properties which you well know um, is in London. So he worked on Harley Street, Savile Road, The Ritz, um, Claridge's. So he worked on a range of different properties from listed buildings to commercial buildings, a lot of uh, shoplift, uh, shoplifting, <laughs> shop fitting buildings. Um, so it gave him a real wide knowledge of how to develop different types of properties. Um, and with that knowledge, he then went on to do some amazing things. So in 1993, I was born. And in 2000, dad went on to set up his own building company in Cambridge, where we're based. Uh, in 2001, my brother came along. As you can see there, there's quite an age gap. So uh, I'll leave it up to you guys if you think it's a mistake or not. Apparently not. <laughs> um, and then in the early 2000s, dad was growing the SJC team. They were building a small portfolio in Cambridge and at the same time doing lots of residential conversions. So as you can see here in 2005, before PD rights were really a thing, he actually did an amazing commercial conversion. So this was an old warehouse. And as you can see here, he took the roof off and then built it into a three-story townhouse with zinc cladding, a roof guarding, etc. So he was doing some pretty cool things. And once they got this small portfolio built, they actually decided to sell the lot and put the money into these barn conversions. So they brought two barns here and they're converting them into three barns. Um, and this is one of the things that I want to talk to you about and like lessons learned being in the property market was that this was going to be their retirement pot. They were going to do these, sell them, and that was going to be sort of them set. However, everyone knows what happened in 2008 
And basically, um, with the market changes in, in the um, current environments that they were in at the time, they'd come out and they broke even. So it wasn't the best deal that they'd hoped for. And that just proves to me that you cannot time the market uh, how and when you want it to be. So this is one of the lessons I learned along the way. And I'm going to teach you guys how we can now adapt that. So he went back to doing what he knows best and did a lot of residential work. Um, whilst yeah, building up a fantastic uh, reputation in a local area. And he's always said to me that this business would always be there for me to go into. So I started working on my business management degree and I got that. And then I went off to become a financial advisor. So has anyone seen Wolf of Wall Street? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, everyone knows what I'm talking about. So with financial advising, I absolutely love it. I love helping people. If people want to come talk to me about that sort of stuff, I'm more than happy to have a conversation with you guys. Um, we do a lot of SaaS investing ourselves. So if anyone wants to learn how to utilize their own private pension uh, and turn it into a SaaS pension, happy to talk about that and show you some ideas and share some ideas of yourselves. Um, however, it just was the company I was working for was really unethical and immoral. So um, it just didn't sit right with me. They were more bothered about their commission rather than helping people. So I actually decided to, to leave that industry. Um, and I was back working on site. I can remember putting the sand in the mixer and the cement in the mixer. Uh, it was cold. It was wet. It was miserable. It was December. And I was like, come on, there's got to be more to this um, than this amazing building that we've got and my financial um, advising uh, knowledge. Like, what can we do? So that's when I picked up Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I'm sure many of you have read that. And from that, it was like a literally like a brainwave idea. So with that, uh, I actually joined the local pin meeting for the first time. And again, that was like, oh, my God, wow, there's so many different ideas and different strategies. Like, what do we do? So I decided to go on to um, the three day mastermind program uh, with Simon Zucci. It's absolutely fantastic. I recommend it to anyone. You learn about all different strategies on there. Uh, you also get a group of about 60 of you. So you start to build your network. Um, so from the back of that, we started to implement what we'd learned and we set up our SJC property development company. Um, and from that, we actually went on to the 12 month mastermind program. So um, I cannot recommend this highly enough in the in the mastermind program. Um, you again, learn the strategies in a lot more detail. You start to build your network and get loads of different ideas on what you can and can't do. Uh, and it really helps you implement uh, all different strategies and get going in your journey. So in the first couple of years on our journey with our, with our mastermind training, we managed to get a few deals over the line. Uh, so as you can see here, we've got a few rent to SA opportunities to start off with. Then the pandemic hit and then we managed to get actually three properties brought basically in the space of a week just before the stamp duty ended, um, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, and then Ryan joined our team in uh, Q1 of last year. And towards the back end of last year, um, yeah, we managed to finish our church development, which I'm going to talk to you a little bit about today. And also this year, we've managed to get another couple of properties over line and also been up and nominated for some fantastic awards. So our vision at SJC is to create homes that ignite tenant pride and provide a place they're proud to call their own. So we strive to be recognised as the leading landlord in Cambridge. So I want to talk to you a little bit about a few of our deals. Uh, and this is the first deal uh, that I'm talking about, which is 11 Hall Crescent, which is a six bed HMO conversion. So um, as you can see here, that photo is actually made in bedroom two. I don't know why it's had a little glitch, but it's OK. Um, so as you can see here, this property was built around the 1970s and um, the furniture and all the decor was pretty much updated in the 1970s too. So it was already a four bedroom property. Um, but it was quite a funny layout downstairs. Uh, so we managed to reconvert the garage um, into two extra, uh, into one extra bedroom. And then utilizing the space there, we actually managed to get another bedroom in the lounge downstairs. So we created a six bedroom co-living HMO. And this is what it looks like after. So we build to a really, really high spec. Uh, we want to make it functionally and aesthetically pleasing. So as you can see here, we go above and beyond with the lighting features. We always use bespoke wardrobes to create maximum space um, and functionality. Um, and as you can see, this is quite a long bedroom, but we work with the space to make sure we're maximizing it. So we actually um, work this whole bedroom around this bed. And you'll see what I mean as we go through this, uh, how we reverse engineer our projects. Um, and there's little things like this underneath the staircase. We built all bespoke um, cupboards and drawers so they can put all their shoes in there. So it just keeps everything nice, neat and tidy. Uh, throughout the projects. So the figures on this one, 
was that we brought for 375 and development cost of 120,000, uh, total costings 495, and we got a RICS valuation of 535. So we managed to refinance out 401,250, and the money left in was 93,750 with an ROI of 32.8%. So grossly, it generates 54,000 and nets just over 30K. So it's an absolutely fantastic deal. And it's like, how many of these deals do you need before you come financially free? The next one I want to talk to you about is Duxford Church. So this was a commercial to resi conversion. Some of you actually might have already seen this as it featured on BBC One Homes Under the Hammer. Um, so if you haven't, then uh, I'll, there's a little slide later on where you can check it out uh, if you want to see it on TV. So I want to talk to you a little bit about this project. As you can see, before we brought it, it was very much a church. Um, when we originally went to purchase it, it was in the midst of COVID. So we'd agreed the sale price at 266,000. Um, and we'd agreed that um, we we're going to be buying it in an SPV. So it's a special product vehicle. We all made the owners completely aware of this. And obviously being in the midst of COVID, we said need a little bit of time just to get the bank account set up. So we went off and tried to get the bank account set up. However, as we know in COVID, it was so hard to get anything done. Um, and we said we're going to need about 12 weeks. After week eight, the owners um, decided that they actually wanted to speed things up. So we asked if we could um, put down uh, some deposit and hold it. And they were like, no, we'd been completely open from day one and we'd already started the planning process. So we'd already actually spent probably the best part of £10,000 on this deal. So we were desperate um, to, to make things work. However, they were really keen to get it sold. So we were trying everything to get a meeting in place at the bank, but it was just taking a little bit of extra time. So they actually decided to put it back on the open market. So at this point, as you can imagine, I was pulling my hair out, I was getting stressed. Um, and then about two weeks later, we actually saw uh, it gone up for auction. So we decided to put in an early offer on the auction. It got accepted. However, as soon as I found out it's our company, they decided, no, they want to go to the actual auction. So... Silver lining of all this was we actually won it at auction for £218,000. So we made a huge saving of £48,000, which is fantastic. Um, so, yeah, we got the property, got it at auction. So that's great. So it was a uh, grade two listed. It was in a conservation area and um, it had no plans outlined for it. So there was a lot of obviously risk elements in there. However, we knew of our fantastic team that we could either convert it into residential keep it as a commercial and still do other things with it. And there was many different exits. So that's again, something I'm gonna to talk to you about today is having different exit strategies. Uh, and this is what we created. So as you can see here, it's two beautiful one bed mezzanine apartments. So from the front, that's the front wall there. As you walk in, we've kept this amazing gallery, which is obviously all grade two listed. We've kept the, the features in here, which is the columns, uh, the paneling. And what we wanted to do is want to be really sympathetic to the design. So anything that was listed, we wanted to make pop with the color. Anything we're putting back, we wanted to keep really contemporary and modern, but make sure that we're being sympathetic to design. So um, yeah, I think we absolutely nailed the brief on this one. We went again, super high end. So it's got electric blinds. Um, it's got sunken in charging points um yeah feature walls so in here with the additional lighting we really like this as a lighting feature so um yeah we managed to get it through obviously planning which is brilliant and get what we wanted from a residential point which was our exit number one so the figures on this one was a purchase 218 development cost of 300,000, total costing 518 and a new RICS value of 750. So amount refinance was 562,500, meaning there was no money left in and a profit of 44,500. Um, because we got two one beds, mezzanine apartments, um, they're actually over hundred square meters each. So they're huge. They're roughly the size of sort of a two, three bed house. Um, what we've done is, is we run an experiment the past year and these figures are based if we're gonna run both of them as buy to lets and like grossly, they generate 39,000. Um, and if we're gonna run both at service accommodation, grossly with our management company, they predicted that we'd be earning 54,000. So what we did was we ran one as a buy to let and one as a service accommodation. And as we expected, we came somewhere out in the middle of these two, um, two figures here. Uh, so it was absolutely brilliant that they were both pretty much spot, spot on our expectations. Uh, and then it was a case of us evaluating the situation and thinking, do we want to go down more of a service accommodation route and generate some more income, but higher turnover, so maybe slightly more wear and tear, or do you want to do the buy-to-let market 
and go down that route and earn slightly less, but have slightly less turnover. And what we've actually decided to do is run them now both as service accommodation, and we're running a new experiment where we actually manage one ourselves now and have one managed by a company. And we're going to see what is more profitable for ourselves um, in the future. So yeah, absolutely fantastic deal, um, but some real key lessons on this. So the first one I want to talk to you about today is, uh, is your power team. So with this um, planning consultants and architects, I can't stress enough how important it is and what way around to use them. So when we found this deal, straight away, we took it to our planning consultant because with architects, um, they will maybe be able to create this beautiful design and beautiful elements, but they may not know all the constraints in that local area. So it may hinder you when you're going for planning because they can make it look all beautiful, but it might not meet all the requirements. So straight away, whenever you do a deal, go to the planning consultant first, whenever you require planning from day one, go get them. Even if you haven't had an offer accepted, but you're thinking about putting an offer, go speak to your planning consultant and see, right, this is what I'm planning to do with it. These are either the PD rights that I want to use, or this is what I'm thinking about doing, converting it. What are the chances are getting, uh, what are the chances are getting planning through? And they'll be able to tell you um, the chances. And then from that, you can work out, okay, we can afford to put this much forward for our offer because we believe if the risk comes off, it's going to be worth this amount. Or actually, do you know what? The risk is too big. We're not going to move forward on this. Uh, again, with this being a conservation area, um, naively, I was like, we're developers. We can build anything. And um, I went in thinking that they'd work with us. However, very, very wrong of me. Uh, expectation wise they start up here and you need to start down here exactly. and you come somewhere in the middle uh, i can't express that enough um and it was great to have our architect and planning consultant there on the meetings because it was like world war three uh and it was very much a case of i was controlling <laughs> the, the conversation uh, our planning consultant and architects are stating our points and the conservation officer was stating her points and we came up to an amazing conclusion in the end which we all agreed on so i can't stress that enough next thing building inspectors Personally, we like to work with private inspectors and, and choose ideally not to work with council inspectors. That's nothing against them whatsoever. It just, what we find is, is once you've done a few projects, you'll get uh, an amazing reputation build up with your private building inspector and you'll be able to work with them so much more efficiently and easily because they'll know how you build you know what's required of, from them and you just be able to build up that amazing relationship. And what sometimes you find with the council ones is, is that there might be five or six different ones in a team and they're all different. Uh, they will come out all at different points and they'll all want different things doing. So you, you find that you end up either telling them things twice or you have to go back and explain something of how you've done it. Whereas with the private inspectors, you normally get one person come out. They do the whole project. So as soon as you've got parts signed off as you're going through the process, it just makes it nice and smooth and easy. Um, and then with the council ones, we also find they have a higher turnover. So you normally get, I don't know, you stay there maybe for a six months or a couple of years and they go off. Whereas with private inspectors, you tend to find they stay longer at the same company and you just build that relationship over years. We've now been working with the same company for the past 10, 15 years uh, and they've been absolutely brilliant. <clears throat> If we have any issues whatsoever, we can send photos over. They'll come back or they'll come out on site immediately. Uh, as well as that, if anything needs signing off, <clears throat> sometimes now I'll even just accept photos because we've obviously got that trust with that relationship. And lastly, I cannot express enough how good open days are. So as you can see, our team is a very young team. And when Matt and Ryan used to go in to buy a half a million pound property in Cambridge in to estate agents, they literally got laughed out the door. So with open days, um, I'm actually going to give you today our uh, investor pack and our valuation pack. So you can literally, it's going to be drop and you, you'll be able to get them. You'll be able to look at ours and you'll just be able to then put your own deals in them just by dropping in your information um, to be able to create your investor pack, to be able to get investors. So if you're a deal source, it'd be absolutely fantastic. And also the end pack, which is our GDV, to be able to help you get the, the highest GDV possible. And we're going to talk to you about a little bit of secrets as well, how we achieve that. Uh, and one of the ways is an open day. So as I said, our team's really young, so we need to get credibility and awareness of that, um, how good we are. So once church was done, what we did was, and sorry if there's any estate agents in here, we use the same tactic as the estate agents use in us when they create that high energy um, psychology of that, we need to buy it now. So we got all the letting agents, all the sales agents around in the property within a two hour window, 
And we got them looking around, obviously asking questions to us. It created loads of energy. They all wanted to work with us. And then we asked them all at the end to write down either their value or the property uh, as a GDV, or if we're going to let it, what they'd let it for. And of course, because they can see and they know each other's in the room, they all wanted to work with us. But they just kept putting up the lettings higher and the valuations kept going up and up and up. And we got all this in email form to us. And what we do is then we took this data and we put that in the valuation pack. So when the, the, when the surveyor comes around from the mortgage company, when you're refinancing, they see this data. That, oh, my God, like it's been valued at that. OK, we've got to value it somewhere around that. And again, because they're a higher, higher than GDV than may be expected, that it makes them think twice about what valuation to give you. So it really does help get the highest GDV possible. So that's a little tip for you guys out there today, one of our golden nuggets. Um, and as well as that, by doing this, it will just increase your credibility. And I can't tell you enough how much now when Matt and Ryan walk into state agents, how much it changes because they know they'll take them seriously. Um, and we actually started to get offered off-market deals within 24 hours. So it's a really good way to build up that relationship with um, your agents. So since then, um, I just want to talk a little bit more about the journey. Uh, in my first year, uh, as a, when I was a mastermind, I went from zero to a million pound portfolio, generating over a hundred thousand pounds in one year and achieved top performer on Mastermind 28. We also were on top performer on Volta Pontes and we won his Ultimate Investor Award earlier on this year. Uh, at the HMO Awards, we uh, were in the top five in the UK for best Rizzi to HMO conversion. And as I mentioned before, we did feature on Homes Under the Hammer. Uh, so if you guys do want to go check it out, it was Series 25, Episode 72. Uh, we also are on Property Entrepreneur and nominated for Deal of the Year with our commercial valuation at Church. And we're also um, finalists at the National Property Investor Awards this uh, December. So we cannot wait for that for our church deals. Hopefully we can bring that one home uh, as well. So that's super, super exciting. And we also featured on Ultimate FD, Josh Keegan's podcast, which is Family Business Level Up. So we've done um, lots of different talks now, speaking around the country and how we can help people. Um, and... What we found is from our experience is that people started to ask about our success and how we can help and teach them. However, being based geographically in Cambridge and also being so busy ourselves doing deals, it's really hard for us um, to be able to help everyone at once. So what we've done is, is we've created our model uh, about how to overcome these challenges. And these are what we find most people uh, are, are faced when uh, in trying to do property development. And please, at the end, if you have any more challenges, please let me know and speak to me. So I want to be able to help people and give back to the community uh, about overcoming them. So we find a lot of people struggling of how to price the cost of building works. Um, they're overwhelmed by building knowledge in the process and sequence of events of how it how it goes. You'll be finding a lot of people sort of painting the walls pink before they've even looked at all the elements of what goes into the build and how to develop. Uh, and also we find a lot of people are consumed by worry of how to find good deals and effectively manage a build team, um, which can cause them anxiety and stress. So. What we've done is we've created the SJC method and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about this today. Um, and again, how Property Filter is an amazing tool which we use within our system on how to find deals and stack deals. Um, so yeah, I'm going to talk to you through part of this today. So the SJC system. So as I mentioned before, we're going to give you this investor pack today. Um, you can see here, just parts of it. We're going to talk you through different phases and how we stack them up how we find the comparables and then how we look at the ground floor um, and existing floor plans and convert them into uh, the floor plans that we then create the property into. So this property um, is in Cambridge and we found it via the property filter portal. And I cannot tell you enough how good property filter is for us because we actually managed to contact the agent before they even contacted us and managed to get our offer in um, and we secured this one. Um, back in February and it actually recently went through. So we're going to talk to you a little bit about this deal today. So what we do is we start with the floor plan. So as you can see here, this is the existing floor plan. And then this is the floor plan that we create into it. So this is just, again, rough before you've even put your offer in. This is what you can send out in the investor pack. Um, as you can see here, again, this was uh, from Rightmove and then we're taking that and created what we'd call our floor plan, like draft one. And now I'm going to talk you through phase one. 
So for phase one on this property, as you can see, it will be converting it into a six bedroom HMO. So we put the numbers and the plan together. So for this one, the purchase price was this 410,250 and a GDV of 600. We're really conservative on our room rates and what we'll be able to achieve. So we put them here at 850, but it'd be more than likely 950 to 1,000 pounds. And then this then generates the ROI. Again, we do all of our numbers through Property Filter. Again, their spreadsheet's absolutely fantastic. I know Guillaume has loads of different workshops that he runs on these. And obviously you can reach out for help anytime that you need to do that. And then we put here what the refurb and works cost would be to do it up. So phase two, as you can see here, this is the floor plan for the whole um, or bird's eye view of the whole property. So as you can see, there's this garage here and phase two would be to convert the garage into a studio apartment to have a little SA. Potentially as well, using PD rights, we could actually extend this. Uh, and that's what we're exploring at the moment. So if we were to do phase two, again, that is the numbers for it. So that's again, the purchase price, the GDV, and then would expect one room to rent for £1,500 per calendar month. We'd run this on an SA basis, so you'd be able to see from the comparables that we found. Um, if we run it as a buy-to-let um, AST, it will be slightly less, but we'd run it as an SA. That's the annual, annual net profit. Um, and then that is the ROI and the cost of works to do the build. Phase three is to utilize, again, this land here and put on a two to three bed semi-detached property. So obviously this requires planning for this phase. So with phase one and two, we can do all under PD rights. So the risk is very low. This is what we like about this deal is that we can get phase one and two, which absolutely makes it a fantastic deal in its own right. And if we get phase three with the planning, it's like the cream on, cream on top. It's at, it makes it even better, like such a good deal. Um, obviously we know there's risk involved in that and that will take time, but we can do phase one and two almost immediately. Again, we have exit and contingencies in place. If we didn't get planning for a different dwelling on the side here, what we could do is look to extend out the side and make it into an even bigger, sui generis uh, HMO. So then these are the numbers and the plans to convert it into a six bed HMO, a garage conversion, and then again, a three bed property. As you can see here, the return on the capital is absolutely fantastic. And as you can see here, the build works and costs to do all the different works on the property. So once we've done that, we then look at all the value value comparables. So as you can see here, we did our six bed valued at 600,000. Uh, as you can see, all the comparables are so close to the property. So 321 meters, well, all, all within 300 meters and all um, around the 550 mark for three to four beds. So we know of a six bed, we'll easily be able to see, achieve 600. There's actual comparables in the area of sort of, um, say, like larger houses, but towards the 700 and 800,000 pound mark. So um, we know we'd easily be able to achieve that. But again, we'd much rather be conservative of our figures. Uh, so these are really conservative. And obviously, as you can see now, even a couple of years old. So obviously, the property price is already increased. We know that we'll be able to achieve 600,000. The rental comparables, this is how we get our rentable comparables. So we look on the local market. We know the area. These are your really bog standard bedrooms. Obviously, they're not done to a high standard like ours at all. Um, and yet these are renting out all day long for 760, 750, 700. We know, especially working with our specialized letting agent, that we'll be able to achieve minimum 850, more than likely above that. Um, so yeah, again, we get all this information um, speaking to the experts in the area. So we work with a HMO specialist letting agent. Um, and also we bring up other different agents to see what they think the, the value of the property be worth and also what they would let it for. These are the rentable comparables for studio. We said 1,500 uh, on a service accommodation basis. Uh, as you can see here, these are one bed studios uh, that let out on sort of a AST for 1,250 pounds per calendar month and also 1,200. So again, we've been really conservative. Uh, even if we run out on AST, we know we could achieve 1,200 pounds conservatively because again, we'd do it to a lot higher standard than this. Um, but running it as an SA and just knowing the area, being so close to the science park, uh, £1,500 is very much achievable. We've taken this data from our church and we achieve roughly on that between £2,000 and £4,000 a month. 
So again, we've been really conservative with the £1,500, especially being this property even closer to town than our churches. We then look at the local area and we showcase to the investor um, where all the different parts of, of town are that, that might appeal to people that are going to be moving to the area or renting the area, uh, just so they know what, what to expect uh, and make it easier for them. So you want to make sure that if you're getting investors on board, you're looking to invest in that area yourself, you know the area as well as possible. We also showcase where the local amenities are, so where the schools are, train stations. Um, if you've got a Waitrose within 10 miles, definitely put that on there because I don't know if anyone's heard of the Waitrose effect, but you will get a slightly higher GDV. So it's just a case of, uh, again, letting the either investor know or whoever's going to be involved in the project know where everything is. So once we've done that, we then that that's all part of the investor pack. So you can then send that off if you're a deal sourcer. Just spend that little bit of time putting that pack together. I can tell you now, we'll put you so much further in front of most deal, uh, deal sources. And the next thing is if you um, take all that information and then do a little bit more than most, the average, and put this project brief together, I, I guarantee you'll be in the 1% of deal sources that do this. And if for credibility wise, if you're going to investors, uh, if you show them this, they're way more likely to invest in your projects than the average deal source out there. Um, so working with Property Filter and doing all that information up front and making sure you've got all your numbers correct, then doing your obviously your your brief for your um, sorry your uh, investor pack um, and looking at the floor plans and getting the experts in to say, yes, you can do that, or do you know what, we might need planning for that, but we've got X amount of chance, um, is really, really highly recommended. So you've now got your investor pack, fantastic. Right, cool, that's been sent out. Now what you're gonna do is, you're gonna do a project brief. So this is one of our recent HMOs that we purchased, and it's close to uh, Adam Brooks Hospital. So what we wanted to do was, um, is, it's inspired by the classical themes. So it's what to do paneling, heritage colours, reflecting Cambridge rich heritage. So this is Project Greenlands. As you can see here, um, it's very much, again, a very dated property. And we wanted to convert this into a six bedroom co-living HMO. So now what we've done is we've gone into more detail here. These were the floor plans from Rightmove, and then these are detailed floor plans. So what you want to make sure you're doing is, is taking down every single measurement, and we showcase you how to do this really easily by either doing it with the old school way, with an old tape, or using a laser tape measurer. Um, there's different systems out there how you can put this information in. Again, we showcase you how to do that, because... All this is so vital, especially when you're doing HMOs and conversions, because you've got to meet minimum space standards. And you'll 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 see later on how it all corresponds. So you can see in this one, we managed to get six en suites with careful design into this property or off suites, and how all the bedrooms relate. So as you can see here, this is our garage, and we've done a double garage conversion in this property. Next thing, what we did was create all the scheduling. So I'm sure many of you have done your own building projects. Some of you may have done developments. Some of you may have done extensions. And you're so excited because you've got this amazing idea in your head. It's like, oh, yeah, we can do this, this, and this. So what you do is you get the builder to come around and you start going through the project and you start rattling off exactly what you want. So you want, you know, this over here. I want this paneling on the wall. I want these doors. And the builder's running behind and he's getting his little pen and pad out. And he's swilling down what you want, you know, you want it this big. Um, and you're, you're saying, oh, you know, I want these, I want the plug socket there. Okay, I'm trying to work that down. And and what happens is um, you put all his information on him. You tell him the paint colour. And he's trying to do all this. He then gets his little pad out. He then goes back to his van. Probably spills a cup of tea over it, let's be honest. And it gets scribbled up. It will go into all the where his uh, other bits of paper are. It will get it out probably a week later. And he'll start trying to quote from it and trying to remember back to that meeting with all the other meetings he had also that week. And then he'll give you a price based on what he took from that meeting. And especially if you're doing HMOs, he might think you want lower quality. So in your head, you might have black plug sockets, USB, which are worth about £25, £20. In his head, he's just taking plug socket. So you just put your white 
double socket in, which is worth about three, four quid. So imagine now that just, just that one example to comprehend over the property. So imagine plug sockets, right? So you're thinking double black USB throughout the whole property. Let's say if you're doing a HMO, maybe there's what, two in a room. So if you've got six bedrooms, that's 12 plus throughout the rest of the property and in the kitchen. So let's say 20. So 20 multiplies by the additional 20 pounds straight away. You're talking additional 400 pounds in plug sockets alone just before you comprehend anything else in the property. So imagine all the other things you've got, you've got to take into consideration, your doors, your skirting, your tiles, your, your plug, like your, your light switches, absolutely everything. So what we like to do is reverse engineer it and start with the end in mind. So what we do is we create all these schedules and show you how to do that. So as you can see, this is an example of electricity schedule here, where we've done is we've mapped out exactly where the spotlight's gonna be going and exactly where then the lighting switch is gonna go. We do this for the plumbing, joinery, kitchen, flooring, tiling, and decorating doors. And what it enables the, the builder then to do is, is take all this information up front and quote more accurately. It's not gonna be bang on because it's always going to be contingencies and different things that happen throughout the progress, but it will definitely be able to help them give a more accurate and quote on what you're expecting. And as well as that, it's gonna become uh, so much more easier to get out the information from your head onto paper to then visually show the builder what they need to build. Um, because this saves so much time and money. Otherwise, you've got to be on site more answering questions like, oh yeah, I want that there, or I want that there. Whereas if you do all this legwork up front, it just enables the builders to do what they do best and build, whilst you can work from afar uh, and carry on with your own life and obviously get that freedom back and do what you love and spend time with friends and family, etc. Uh, as well as that, um, with, with the building costs, if they are going down the route of, the, well, well, so let's say they come out and do that first initial uh, meeting with yourself and let's say they do quote only for the white plug sockets what you're going to find is is that once they've built it there's going to be a huge difference to what you thought you had in your head of the end design compared to what they've built and therefore it's going to cost you more to put it right but additionally they've got to re uh motivate the work staff to put it right and it just costs so much more time and money to go back and do that rather than have it all up front so it takes a little bit of extra work to put this pack together, but I guarantee you it will save you time and money. So you start with the end in mind. You start with the mood board. Go on Pinterest, create a mood board or get your magazines out, create a lovely A3 bit of paper and start doing this process. Think about what it's going to look like, color schemes, different taps, etc. What are you thinking about putting in the property? Then from the design that you've, that you've taken, create this which is essentially a mood board but more detailed so this here would be the exact bed that would then be utilized in the property so it's all to scale so again you'll see why in a minute that this bed is taken for example from ikea and then that would be the exact size in the scale of floor plans and this is what i mean it's so so important to get these right because then you know exactly where your plug socket needs to be for your bedside table you know exactly then where your light needs to be to be able to switch it off next to your bed you know that you can get your desk out uh, in here etc so i can't tell you enough how important it is to get these right and we showcase you how to do that um, or you can get someone to do it for you um who yeah we, we can show you how to do everything like that So every one of these features here will then be input into the property. Again, this would be like the color scheme. So this is the right color of the paneling, et cetera. Because what you wanna do is create CGI's that look exactly how you want the property to look and feel when you're finished. So again, what we then do is, is take the, the fitted furniture and you get 2D and 3D plans for the kitchen. You can go to your local suppliers to get these done for free. So you can go to sort of, for example, we utilize Howden's as our kitchen designer. Um, so you go there get them, so you give them your measurements or get them to come out and do their own measurements so you know it's accurate. Get them to quote for exactly what you want. And by doing this process, it allows to procure everything. So then you can take it to different suppliers and get the best price for exactly what you want. Um, so it's apps, I can't tell you enough how good uh, this process is and how much time and money you'll save overall. The next thing what you wanna do is get CGI's created. So again, we show you how to do this using different types of software. And then what it enables you to do is, is put a pack together of 
all the designs of what exactly what it's going to look like with all the measurements. You give that to the build team and they're then going to be able to create that image for you and it will look very similar to what you've got in your head. So as you can see here, this is the CGI and then this is the real photo of how it looked. This is the CGI of the bedroom and again, the real photo. So it's almost identical. You wouldn't even know um, that it's any different. And that's just because, again, we give them such a good spec up front of what it's going to look like. So we then take this forward and do it with the flooring. So then you showcase here, right, in the design plans, this is the flooring that we want to utilize. This is the way we want it laid. We want upstand of this. If you're doing upstands, we want grout color of this. And just make it really nice and easy for the build team to be able to just take the brief and just do the work. Exactly the same here with the tiles, et cetera. Um, just go through all the property and do this. And again, we've shown you how to do this. Um, so you can just take this and just drop in your project and then just give it to the build team to quote. We then do the decorating schedule. So you show what wall is going to be painted in what color, what finish, are there any feature rules? Is there any wallpaper, etc.? And then you create the furniture cost spreadsheet. So you can see here, if this was one of our, this, if this was a project, you then go through and you'd type in, right, this is the item. This is how much it costs. This is how many we need. This is the shipping. This is the total. Where's it come from? Web link. Item reference number, has it been ordered? Yes. Has it been delivered? Yes. Has it been installed? And this makes it really easy, especially when you do a HMO, um, because you can see here from the projects, right, if someone's on site, they can say, yep, yeah, it's been ordered. Okay, right, when's it meant to be delivered by? If it's meant to be delivered on X amount of date, you know you can put it in a diary, should be delivered. If it hasn't, you can follow it up. Um, and as well, if it's been damaged when it's been delivered, straight away, you can go contact them because you know, right, it's been it's, it's arrived today it's been damaged i need one back in asap when you can get it for here for and then when's it been installed by so it just makes the whole process nice and easy you can also if you're on site or if you're getting someone else to go on site for you you can do this from afar or you can even get a va to do it and do all this for you and put it together a va for anyone that doesn't know stands for a virtual assistant so you can have someone work from you from wherever in the world and be doing all this for you What you then do is create a Gantt chart of exactly what the project is going to consist of. So once you've got the builder and you've given him all this information, you go away and quote for it. He then says, right, this is how long it's going to take to quote. Uh, this is how long it's going to take to build. Once you've taken that, you can then sit down with him. Let's say he says, all right, it's going to take 12 weeks. You say, okay, right, if we give you 12 weeks, if we give you an extra four weeks to complete the project, so you've got 16 weeks, do you think you'd be able to complete that project in time? And you say, yes, of course. Okay, brilliant, right. So let's put this, to, let's build this then Gantt chart together outright so we can go through it all. And then you can see again from afar, right, where should we up to this week? They can then send you little WhatsApps of, okay, yep, yeah, we're up to this progress, or you can come around and see it. And you can just check in as and when you need to. So you can just do site visits like once a week or every other week, making sure you're up to where you need to be. And then for example, let's say the plastering isn't done on time. Okay, why is that? Okay, at the moment we can't get hold of plaster, for example, in COVID. Okay, cool. Well. If, if we can get hold of some, can you work this weekend? And then you can bring the project forward or back independent on where you need it to be. So that after that point, so let's go back to the Gantt chart. Now you've got everything you need to be able to do to run your project from afar. Uh, you can go ahead, go to the project, get the build team in. Um, you can yeah do all this with them and get them really on board with it and obviously get them motivated because they can want to work with you on this and by doing this it makes their life a lot easier and they want to do projects with you again and again and again and now what we come to is so you come to the end of the, the process and if you're looking to again either sell or refinance what we recommend you do is create a valuation pack so again we're going to give you this today uh, you can drop in your own projects into this uh, we give you ours as an example um, and this is what we include in it. So we use the open day to obviously get all the estate agents around, all letting agents around, and we get their valuations. So we put them in it. But then what we also do as a cheeky little tip is get an independent RICS evaluation done. Now it's going to cost you probably the best part of a thousand pounds, but because they're independent, they're more likely, and they're not it's, they're not uh, surveying it for a bank. They're more likely to give you a realistic uh valuation of what it's going to be so the process is 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 get the valuations from your agents so you do the open day 
You then get your independent RICS value out and utilize the valuations that you've got from the estate agents and give them to him. If you can find one that you work really well with, he may even like ask you want it to be valued at. And then you've got your own red book evaluation, um, which you then have. So you, you'd be able to give that. So when the mortgage company valuer comes out, you've got not only one, but you've got loads of different valuations. So again, it's just going to have that psychological effect playing on his mind of, oh, right, I've got to value it somewhere around these. As otherwise, all these valuations aren't relevant. And clearly they are because so many people have valued it like that. So it's basically playing in the mind, playing on the psychology of that. Um, so yeah, just to run through that process again, open day, get your letting agents, give their valuations, get your estate agents, give their valuations, put them in the pack, then get your independent Rick's valuer out, get him to do a red book valuation. And then when you're refinancing, obviously the mortgage company with their surveyor come out, you have your valuation pack on the top, you have your Rick's valuation pack on the top and you give that information to him. He may not want to accept it as well. So what you want to do is email it to him because I'm sure in his own time, we'll definitely have a little look and just make all that um, work that you've done really visible in the pack. I always tell him like the EPCs or electrical certificates, how much you spent on the project, et cetera, uh, just so he can then see. And, and with, um, again, with the valuations, utilize property filter, look in the area and see what other projects are sold for um, so that you can put that information in there just to make sure you got the best comparables. So yeah, and again, we're gonna give you this today so you can just go in there and make your own valuation pack. So what are the benefits of doing this? So it's proven and tested methodology. Um, it helps you complete projects on time and on budget. Um, obviously we're gonna give you exclusive access to our project templates today. And this really will save you time and money by procuring your developments. Uh, and also from a time-wise, it will just, you won't need to be on site as much. So you'll be able to utilize your own time to do whatever you want. Uh, again, um, if you do come and speak to us, we can potentially let you utilize our trade discount at some of our suppliers, uh, which are built up over a number of years. And it will, it will help you create a seven figure portfolio and six figure income. So it's like an end to end user guide, how do you, how to do a development. Um, and it's just, yeah, a fantastic way of, of, uh, taking out that risk of when you're developing. So I want to help people with that. So. Why now? Well, you can't afford not to. So you've got two options. So option one, by doing it the normal way, you're more than likely to go over budget just because there's so many things to differently comprehend, um, leading to reduced returns on investment and financial pressure. Delayed completion times uh, lead to escalated borrowing costs, resulting in missed opportunities generate from the sale or rental. As you've seen, and as we learned from dad's own projects, obviously with the barn conversions, that you can't rely on the market to stay as buoyant as it was, for example, last couple of summers when it's been absolutely on high, it is going to come down and it is going to change. So by doing these strategies and having these exits in place, different exits, you're more than likely to have success on your projects. And two, following the crowd, emulating the massive generic approaches hinders you from grasping the secrets of success. What we recommend is developing and having your niche. So going either super high end or if you know that's not going to work in your area, how can you do something that's different to what everyone else is doing? So you stand out from the crowd. Is it a different way of investing? For example, um, okay, right, uh, let's try and think about this. Um, okay, we're going to do, I don't know, a cinema room or something like that in, in our property. Just something so that you've got a niche over everyone else to make sure that you're getting people um, come to your properties rather than being like everyone else on the market. And option two, so understand the market in the face of uncertainty. So what I mean by this is, is going right back to the start and understanding what the risk is before you've even started the project. So for example, with the church, we knew we were taking on a church that was grade two listed and in the conservation area. So most people would be put off by that. But we knew of our team who were the experts in planning um, that we had a very high chance of getting through residential. And if not, we had backups of keeping it in the same commercial class. And this is what I mean by looking at your project from a whole, evaluating what are the highest risk points, and we show you Casey how to do this, and thinking, right, this is the highest risk point here. And therefore, if we get this expert in and get their advice, it's going to cost us X amount to either put it correct, or we need to allow a bigger contingency in case this happens. Credibility. 
again, become the go-to market leader in your niche, evaluating, um, yeah, elevating your success and opening new doors. So what I mean by this is, is the open day. Put on, it's amazing, open day, get some cha uh, champagne out, get some canapes going, you know, woo the investors, woo the um estate agents and then they will generally come back and want to work with you guys either giving you uh, off-market deals or want to invest in your deals and obviously then it leads to open more doors and lastly it will help you make more money so we're maximizing your earnings by implementing these tactics uh, generating you equity creation and also streamlining processes so allowing you to work less while earning more money so this data um is what we have taken um, and these are the average room rates in Cambridge. As you can see here, the average room rate is £620. These are SJC's room rates that for we're literally we're just about to launch Greenlands and that's what we're about to achieve. And with Hall Crescent, this is what we're achieving here. So as you can see, we're getting nearly 50% more um, than the average in our area just by putting this process in place and building to a higher spec. Now, I appreciate that not everywhere in the country is going to need to be built to this higher spec. But if you can build to a higher spec than everyone else, you can almost guarantee your room to be filled before everyone else's. And this is really highlighted um, when the market wasn't so buoyant like it is now. And that if everyone had the same room, right? If you go on, for example, right move or spare room, and you can see, you know, they've all got the standard sort of either gray carpet or gray walls um, and it all I don't know saying they wanting to achieve 500 pounds if you do something a bit different even a tiny little thing and you charge 550 you know that people are going to come to your room because it stands out and be different and if you need to drop that price by 50 pounds to get people in you'll be able to and you'll still have that USP of your property being different to the one that's e that everyone uh, well, that that's out there that everyone else can see so it's just about looking at different ways that you can maximize your property um, having a USP and then being able to charge more for it. So these are some of the testimonials from our clients that have worked with us over the years. So how can we help you? So if you've enjoyed today, please do follow us on our social media and uh, we'll be happy to well, let you watch our journey, let you uh, grow and happy to help you along the way on your journey and creating that success. And how we can help you is by helping you source a deal. We can also offer you our end-to-end -end user guide, which is obviously what I've gone through today in a development course. So we give you that literally broken down into all of the different spreadsheets, all of the different PDFs, all the different documents that we have and utilize. Um, we give you Loom videos on how to create everything, how to find the right build team, how to go through different floor plans, etc. And all that's broken down for you so you can utilize it and take that in and be a clean hands investor. Also, we do offer mentoring, but I've only got three spaces left. So if you would like one of those spaces, do come and speak to me as they will go really quickly. And lastly, we do offer the opportunity to work with us on our own projects. So, um, yeah, if anything like that interests you guys, please scan the QR code, to download our free investor pack and valuation pack. Um, and if you'd like to speak to me, there's my number. You can also book a call when you scan the QR code um, so we can speak about your own project and uh, yeah, getting you creating an amazing portfolio. So what I want to stress as well is for deal sources out there by implementing just that little bit of work up front and showcasing to the investor what it's going to look like, I guarantee you they're more than likely to snap up your deals. So um, yeah, if you're interested, please do reach out to us. So yeah, sorry, that was really awesome. Thank you. Uh, if you guys uh, enjoyed, that'd be great to have some feedback in the chat. You know, just type "wow" or "amazing" or whatever you 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 think, uh, and then uh, you know we'll move into uh, into questions. I will take just a minute uh, of interlude to say that uh, if you liked today's presentation and if you like this kind of uh, you know like presentation we put together, the awesome guests we have, I would invite you to uh, already book uh, yourself for next week. So next week we've got uh, Ellen Turner from uh, from Coho. Once you've built your HMOs to a great standard, you need to manage them. And so uh, with Ellen, she'll, told us, she'll tell us all about management nightmares and things like that. So I'll just pop in the chat the link to uh, register for next week's meeting, same time, same place. Uh, if you want to book yourself already, that'd be great. And I'll move to questions. So I've got a few questions myself, Sam. So uh, the first one you said, you said on the, on the church, you initially offered 266 and then 
at the auction you won it at 218 what was the pre-auction offer you you put forward we put forward 220 uh, um, okay sorry. yeah we, <laughs> so uh, we, actually, we got it less than that but again our, our highest offer that we're going to go up to at the time was 221 auction so um yeah it was very very tight but yeah yeah, yeah very good yeah it's good it's good so we, we, yeah yeah so i guess we learned some lessons too <laughs> definitely, definitely i really love the the thing about open day uh i know you get the data from the valuation pack i think this is really really valuable uh you mentioned about the agents and things like that but do you also get uh, people from the council you know like these uh conservation officers and people to come as well so that later on when you, you put forward other projects they kind of know like and trust you as well you know what? That's a very good point. Um, we didn't actually get the conservation officer back. We we did offer her to come and see it, but um, we sent her some photos. Um, but no, that's a very good point. Um, we don't we didn't actually do that at all. We with obviously the HMOs, you get the HMO yeah, yeah. licensing team out, um, so they come and view it. Again, we've actually had two two of those say that two of the best. Oh, that's really good. Huh? I've ever seen. I mean, so, I was um, yeah. so series twenty five episode seventy two. If you want to watch on on under the ammo. And um, can you tell a bit more about the story behind the, I can't remember which deal it was, you know, that you found on, on Property Filter, uh, which deal or deals it was. Um, what was the story? Was it uh, fallen through, uh, reduced? What, what, what was the story with the seller and why did they went for you? Sure. So yeah, Property Filter for us, this is where it's absolutely amazing. We've got both of our newest properties from there. So the first one was actually, again, we'd offered on the property. Uh, it got declined. We put it obviously on the back burner. We followed up and we contacted the agent before it even basically well, it come, come back on the market. They were obviously ringing around and starting to tell people. And we contacted that tax them before because of property filter and managed to put our offer in. And we weren't even the highest offer, but because they could see how keen we were, they actually put forward our offer and our offer got accepted. So I, I can't stress enough how good property filter is to be able to do this. Um, and on the second one, um, again, this was, so that, that, that was basically it fallen through and we'd managed to get in there. And with this one on property filter, the most recent we purchased, again, we were first in line. We got our put forward, um, and managed to get it over and across the line. So I can't stress enough of property filter allows you to essentially jump, jump the queue. Um, and it just reduces all that time of looking on right, moving at that. Once you've got your parameters set up, it makes it so easy, um, to go find them deals. So yeah, can't, awesome. it, can't express it enough. Do you have a, do you know if uh, you or if I don't know if someone in the team is on the call as well, if you've got, you know, the QR code, uh, can, do you mind putting the QR code up again? And, uh, or if you have a link to put in the chat as well, That'd be great like this so this is a link basically to to get your valuation pack and i'm guessing uh people can get uh, a copy of the slide as well if you start uh, yeah from, sure from so if you scan the qr code or if you can't scan the qr code um there's my email i'll drop it in the chat now uh and please just email me and then um if i just stop share and then um yeah we'll be able to get the okay. pack over to you guys awesome we'll put it up in a in a minute so and I was really amazed by the the CGI versus the real one. You know, you can't you can't uh, can't uh, tell. You know, like it's uh, it's crazy. Yeah. Again, this is where you work with experts in the field. So you work with interior designers, and they help they produce them for you. Again, this is what we showcase in our in our course of how you do all this, so that it just enables a build team to go do what they best do best and build. Because I'll be completely honest. That, that's that's what they want to do they don't want to be ringing you up and asking oh what, what are you using there or anything like that that's what they, don't, they don't enjoy that um they're good at building and um yeah i'm sure they won't mind me saying that at all so awesome uh so i'll move to the question so santox asking how do i get access to the investor pack uh so this is the qr code and the link or they can email you uh and you'll send them the uh, investor pack yeah. yeah and then someone's asking do pd rights still apply in article 4 areas i guess most of the article Oh, most of the areas in Cambridge are Article 4. Do you focus on deals outside of Article 4? So, yeah, PD rights do not apply in Article yep. 4. Um, so, yeah, luckily for us, Cambridge isn't Article 4 at all. So there's no need to, to worry about that. Yeah, and Article otherwise 4. you can, you've got this thing in Property Filter where you, you can look for deals inside or outside of Article 4 area. And this is how, like, I literally have got one HMO where the garden touches the Article 4 area, but, but I, I got the PD rights you know, on it, so good you know so you get some stuff in reasonable locations uh, uh without needing planning uh someone's asking what software do you use to create your floor plans so again there's actually loads of different ways to create it we use magic plan yeah um on our ones but there's there's thousands of different softwares out there it's whatever uh, works for you guys and works best um so that's one we utilize to start with then we've got a different in-depth one we utilize for the more detailed spec 
Okay. Uh, Aife is asking, uh, can we get a copy of the slides, please? So I'm guessing if if uh, people can email you, you'd be happy to send a copy of the slides as well? Of course. Yes, no problem. Okay. Uh, cool. Uh, Mark is asking, regarding design and decoration, you have suggested a mood board. Do you use or recommend an interior designer to suggest color schemes and decors, etc.? So yeah, we, we work with a lot of wealth dynamics that so looks at characteristics. And you'll find that some people are just more naturally talented in creative design. So yeah, I'd like to I'd like to say my team are quite creative and we put forward our own mood boards and do a lot of the initial design, but we also do work with interior designers as well. It frees up your time to be able to just basically give them the spec of the initial like design and they can then go away, implement a, an amazing mood board, come back with all the lights and the chandeliers, et cetera, that you're going to be putting into your properties and the beds. Um, and it just gets your time back. So I would recommend definitely working with an interior designer, but if you haven't got the, the capacity to do so from a financial point of view, you don't need to, you can do it all yourself. Again, we showcase that in our course of how you can do it for free. If you're time rich or if you need um, essentially to get some time back, how you can outsource this. I guess like all of these things, it's an investment, you know, once you've done it twice, it's a cookie cutter. You can use it for the next one again and again, you know, yeah, you don't need the internal design for every 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 single deal every single room you know yeah so uh then we have some feedback so thanks so much sam it was very insightful that was fabulous many thanks many thanks great fantastic presentation really professional thank you uh very fast and very good <laughs> yeah we we are fast in and around property filter uh wow fantastic presentation uh then i've got uh yeah the link for next week guys if you want to book yourself don't miss next week it's gonna be great uh, great presentation. Fantastic. Great. Fantastic. Uh, you smashed it. Thank you. Great tips on presentation. Absolutely fantastic. Very comprehensive work, Sam. It would be good to understand the steps in building your business from the start uh, so that I could get up and running properly. Sure. Yeah. Reach out, book a call in and happily to explain um, our process and our journey. And then, of course, happy to help you with your journey. That's what we're all here for. Yeah, you're quite generous with your time, you know, so you, you'll you get people on calls and have a conversation. So, yeah, it's uh, really good on you. So I'm going to just uh, stacks and stacks of very good feedback. <laughs> so I'm going to flip a little bit. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, what software do you use for CGI? So, again, we actually outsource that. So we outsource that to a third party that do all the CGI's for us. So, uh, yeah, I don't know what software they use. Uh, all I know is that they do it for us. We just give them the visuals yeah. and what it look like. Yeah, it's all it's what you said about the power team you know at the start you know like it's you don't have time to do all these things you know so uh, you want to be focusing your time on finding more deals doing more deals actually yeah. being the first to call the agents when it call when it falls through and this is where you add the value and then you all the rest is operations and with the right system like sam, sam shares you know you can just scale you know and you can do quite a few of these in the same time uh uh Marily, I really would like to receive the investor pack. Yeah. So if Marily, if you uh, send an email to uh, Sam, I believe the email is in the is below in the chat. Uh do you mind popping it again, Sam? So people yeah. have got your email and they can uh, contact you. Sure. Um Chris saying the the email uh the QR code goes to a link tree, but there is no link to a pack. Uh and but there is just... some there is something with a free valuation pack in one of them. So in the link tree, you'll have multiple options. Uh, I think there is something that says a uh, free valuation pack there. Um, if you just click I, that, fill out the information, and then we'll send the pack to you guys. And actually, I think Richard shared the link for the pack as well uh, in there, uh, just just below. Uh, yeah, great, some great good. feedback. Uh, Lisa is saying maybe may be best to email Sam direct. The above links takes you to a form to book a call. So there's different things, uh, I think. So when I saw it previously, uh, yeah, have a look. E do email Sam, yeah. Yeah, yeah just email me. The, that form is book a call. If you don't want to speak about it, you just want the investor pack, just right on there, no call required. Um, but again, if you want to speak about your own projects, more than happy to do so. Awesome. So yeah, it's been some amazing feedback you know throughout so sorry I've, I've got to skip for the purpose of uh, of time but uh yeah thanks so much sam for for this today uh do you have any uh closing closing thoughts closing sentiments yeah just basically utilize get on property filter utilize it as i can't express enough uh the investment is so worth it and it genuinely will make you have much better deals to be able to jump past all that right move scrolling um so yeah definitely utilize property filter 
And again, please reach out to us if you'd like any help with development. We want to make sure that everyone's developing correctly and um, yeah, as clean hands as possible. Well, Sam, thank you so much. Thank you for the, the, the prompt as well at the end. So thank you all for joining us today on the, today's Deal Final Corner. Uh, visit propertyfilter.co.uk, log on to your Property Filter account, check out the deal methodology and blueprint where you can define your gold mine area, engage with motivated sellers just like Sam does, assess properties in seconds, load your pipeline and actually start doing deals. Have an endless supply of deals, join the top 1% and become a high achiever deal finder. I hope you enjoyed today's deal finder corner. I look forward to seeing you next week. Have a great day. Have a great week and see you next week. Thank you so much, Sam. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.